Hello, I'm David Hunt and welcome to The Art Hunter. My guest today, oh God, here we go, you know, a long involved story. He's a naughty boy, but his mother has always known it. At the age of 12, he thought he'd start to create his own radio show on his cassette player. Poor family having to listen to it. Uh, fast forward, uh, he started on radio, uh, community radio, with a good mate on Joy 94.9. That's where I met him. I'm not happy with that. Ooh, no, he wasn't happy with just being on community radio. He gets a, a real job in a commercial radio station. And now he runs the whole network. No, he does. No, I'm just, um, I'm just um, messing with you. Uh, still not satisfied, he decides to write a book. Don't we all? Well, no, we don't. Uh, he's particularly naughty in the book, telling all these stories, embarrassing stories, but we'll get to that. But listen to what some of, some of the people say about it. Oh, he has got a potty mouth, so you might have to beep a lot of the time uh, out of the, the show. Uh, here we go with what some of the people think about him. A deliciously camp. Mm. Chrissy Swan said that about him. Surprisingly <laughs> readable. Uh, that Sam, Sam Payne said that. Uh, brace yourself, peeps. That's uh, Anthony Clear. Shall we meet him? Let's meet him. Let's get it out of the way. He is a dear friend of mine. That's why I've been so naughty to him. Uh, hello, Andy. Hello. David, what an intro. That was great. Thank you very much for that. My pleasure. I'm very naughty, aren't I? Well, no, you know what you're not. <laughs> you're not at all. Um, and and you've surprised me with this book, uh, uh, saying that you are potty mouthed and whatever. Mm. Well, I've never seen that with you, but maybe it comes out in the writing, does it? Oh, it definitely comes out in the writing. Yep. And it comes out behind closed doors, David. Yep. So, yes, I mean, you and I have known each other many, many years. Mm. Um, through community radio and obviously I didn't you know use a potty mouth on community radio of course you know kept it very clean but yeah I, I do have a bit of a potty mouth and right. that's why I'm so your poor partner has <laughs> to put up with a lot at home um, so yes. Matt hello Matt uh, so let's start 12 year old yes you decided to you wanted to be a radio person at yep, 12 I cassette did. player yes yes in Tell my us. bedroom so I decided to create my own little radio show, literally in my bedroom, you know, and what I would do is get a blank cassette tape. So this is going back many, many years. Mm -hmm. um, and I would record like little intros and outros of, of the songs. And I had a little microphone and I used to record that. And then what I would do is I would record a, a song in between that yeah. and then do an outro. Um, and like, you know, an actual, you know, radio show, essentially, yeah, yeah. you know. And I used to put it all together and, you know, it wasn't very high tech in the, of course, you know, but, of you course. know, it used to be a bit chopped and changed here and there. Yeah. I put it all together and then um, I'd play it for my family. Right. Much to their boredom and disgust mm. and they had no interest in it at all, but <laughs> I was thrilled to share it with but, them. But why radio? What, why do you think you want, in those early stages before you now have moved fast forward yeah. in life, what, what, what was it? Yeah, I think for, for me, it was a case of, I, I grew up in a, I suppose, a radio family. Not that my family or, or parents or, or siblings worked in radio. Um, it was essentially that every I suppose, day in our household, we had the radio on. So my mum mm. used to listen to, it was an avid listener, and still is, of 3AW and ABC, yeah. Yeah. all the talkback stations. And my dad would listen to all the music stations and stuff like that. And we would play a lot of music, um, you know, in our household. And like, a lot of the old classics like the, you know, Roy Orbison, Righteous Brothers, John yeah. Farnham, hey, you know, Cold you're Chisel, the voice. You're the Voice, <laughs> yes. All that kind of stuff. So I grew up in sort of a radio music family, you yeah. know, and um, it just, I suppose the passion kind of was born then. I was just fascinated by, mm. by radio, more okay. so than, than TV, actually. It was always radio right. for me from a very, very early stage. Right, okay. Um, and I prefer to listen to the radio than actually just play cassette That's... tapes of albums and, and, right. and music and stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right, so as you got older, uh, you met um, Adrian, yes. and uh, you all of a sudden had this show, a, a couple of shows, which you ended up being on breakfast uh, two days a week yes. on Joy 94.9 yes. as a volunteer. Yes, volunteer. And you did that for about how long? Eight, eight years. Whoa. Yeah, a long time. And we were holding down full-time work at that stage. Yeah. And Adrian and I both had corporate jobs and yeah. and quite senior corporate jobs and that. But uh, Tuesday and Thursday, we would do 
breakfast radio. I Did you it. enjoy it? Absolutely loved it. Yeah. Probably some of the best years of my life, wow. you know. And, you know, we were so lucky we got the opportunity to interview some most, like, incredible people. You had you big know, names on the show. Massive names. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and um, why did you end it? I hear that um, Adrian ended up hating you and he stormed <laughs> off one day. Was that true? <laughs> Absolutely not, David. I hated him. No, <laughs> get it right, though. Um, no, Adrian actually um, went through surrogacy. So, and, and that was part of our show, actually, is, is sharing that story on air when he decided to become a parent. Right, you know, and so. it was really gorgeous because you would have guests on and t tell the story. Well, yeah, we we're, during the, the pregnancy, um, you know, uh, we say pregnancy because it's like we shared these children, <laughs> basically. Um, so during the pregnancy, um, we would have guests on and we would ask them, you know, at certain stages, depending on where Adrian surrogate was in the pregnancy, what size the you know the the feet well fetuses because they're, they're twins you know were so it started off as like a little you know like a little avocado you know um, and then it stone moved into or, like yeah oh, avocado it, stone yeah. into an avocado Cardo, yeah. and then bigger and bigger and bigger to like a butternut pumpkin and, and it kept a growing beach ball. You know? a beach ball yeah pretty <laughs> much yeah so um, but you know Adrian you know obviously having two children you know to, to raise and, and two infant babies was a huge lifestyle change for mm. him so to get up at you know four or five in the morning to be on air at six you know two days a week plus you know do a corporate job as well it just got a little bit too much for him and i was really lucky enough that i had opportunity at that stage as well to work in sort of commercial radio so we kind of made the decision after eight years to, mm. to you know give up our andy and adrian breakfast show and it was a tough decision because yeah. we we loved it and yeah. we would still be there today well you know? and you were loved by by the station oh, and the listeners David, uh, thank as well you. that's yeah. very kind no you definitely were uh, but what was it like moving from community radio, where you know, like pretty basic <laughs> things held together with a rubber band, um, to uh, being at a commercial uh, radio station? Yeah, look, the main difference is resources and budget. So essentially, you've got a lot more people, you know, a lot more producers, okay. and, and not just you know producers for you know booking in guests and 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 creating content and stuff, but you've got digital content producers who do all the social media and the and the videos and everything like that because radio now is not just an audio medium it's it's visual as well so mm. you've got cameras on in the studio at any one time you know right. from 6 a.m to 9 a.m for a breakfast show and they record everything it's like a big brother episode you know well where does that go that goes online Right. Yeah, they chop it up. They use it for to oh, okay. promote the show. They might be uh, using it for guest promotions and, and, okay. and stuff like that. So a lot of it is is um, visual as well. Mm. So, um, but uh, but yeah. in those early days, um, you kept going with Adrian I, in a podcast series. Yeah. So what happened was, uh, yeah, we we finished Joy. I moved into commercial radio, and as I said, you know, budget. You get more budget. To, to play with things and you get more resources essentially. Um, and then a few years ago, we kind of got itchy feet again and we thought, oh, do you want to do like radio again or something like that? Um, and what we decided to do is not do radio, we decided to do uh, a podcast. So yep. we did a uh, pitch to, to Nova um, and we pitched our Andy and Adrian podcast, not thinking that they would sign us up, but they did. They signed Fantastic. us up. Yeah, so we yeah. got a, first of all, we got a 12 month deal. Um, so we did, uh, I think it was about 30 episodes in the first year, uh, which was huge. It's a lot, you know, and podcast is very different to how you do a radio show because you have the benefit um, and the flexibility to do edits and, and things like that. Whereas you would know in live radio, once it's out there, you said it, mm. there's no edit, it's out there. You but, know? but also you don't have to be breaking as much for you know, the, the news or the weather That's or, right. or you know, like an ad or something. Yeah, yeah, you, you probably have a little bit more control over the content. Yep. And I think if you're not live to air and you're not doing the broadcast, you can be a little bit more cheeky and a bit of a, bit of a potty mouth, David, as you said before. Um, so we did that for a year and then we signed on for another year. Um, so we did a two year deal with, uh, with Nova and they were great, they were incredible. And, and they fully supported us. Supported yeah, us. Yeah. Um, and then I decided that that was it. Two years was enough. We did sixty episodes. Yeah. We decided to finish that, and um, I focused on something else. What? <laughs> a book, David. Oh. A book. Right. Yes. Oh. Oh. This book. <laughs> this book. Yes, that book, David. Well, the yes. one over my shoulder as yes, well. Yes. Yes. Uh, why? 
Why? Good question. Very good question. Um, I suppose over the years working in community radio, uh, having the podcast, you know, I've, I've got a lot of stories that I've told over the years that, you know, and when I, you know, used to tell some of these stories, you know, on air and stuff like that, and some of them were quite outrageous, but they're, they're, they're my life. It, the stories are based on messed up moments in my life. Um, we would get text messages, we'll get emails into the station saying that story was crazy, it was hilarious. And we had one lady, one particular story that I told, yeah. and she said it was so crazy that she nearly crashed her car because she was <laughs> laughing and had tears rolling down her eyes. You know, Brilliant. so, Brilliant. and you know, some of the stories I haven't shared in a broadcast medium, but I've shared them with friends and family at yep. you know, barbecues and dinner parties and yep. that. And a few people have said, you've got to write a book. You've got to put these stories into a book one day. Mm. Um, so it's kind of been sort of at the back of my mind for, for many, many years. Yeah. You know? But what was it like though, you know, like for people out there that mm. might be interested, it's, it's a pretty tough journey, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like one, you've got to write it yep. and two, getting a publisher. So let's start off with writing it. You know, yeah. like, so did you start that first or did you go after a publisher first? No. So the way I started, I, I started writing it first. Right. Um, and, and the way I kind of uh, did it, and I'm not sure other writers may not do this, but I certainly did. I kind of storyboarded out the book. So I had like little post-it notes and I wrote yep. down like the sort of the headlines of the chapters I wanted to write and the stories I wanted to sort of include in the book and yep. I kind of had about 20 to 30 and then I kind of cut it all down to about 15 and the first chapter is always the hardest to write because you've got to get into the rhythm you know mm. and you've got to be really I suppose strict and dedicated with yourself to to write because essentially it's a full-time job so the way I did it you know I made sure that you know I I'm still working full-time for Nova um, I made sure that you know every night I wrote a little bit and on the weekends, every I wrote, night, yeah, wow, yeah, a couple of hours every That's night. That's dedication. Yeah, and then on the weekends, I would write as well. Okay, and I did that over about a, a nine-month period. Uh, would that be good though? You know, like during the day or on your way to work or on the way home from work, your little your, your mind would spark and go, "Hey, I'm going to add this. I'm going to add that." Absolutely. Uh, stepping away from it, you know, yep. like I, I always find that when you're writing something. Yeah, no, absolutely. You're spot on. You're spot on. So once I wrote the initial manuscript, you know, um, and that probably took about nine months to kind of complete. Yeah. Um, Did you I, get somebody to read it? Not at that stage, no. Right. I popped it in a drawer and I didn't look at it oh, for a couple of months. Okay. And I just used to think about the stories and, and, and what edits I could make, you know, to, oh, to make it better. Right. And, okay. and I would literally yes, just take right little thing. notes on my phone, yep. you know, and, and I would sort of go, I should add that into that chapter or, or remove that or yep. I need to... I need to talk about that angle of the story a little bit more and, and flesh it out. You know, yeah. it's a little bit too short or what have you. Um, so I and did so that. And so how long was that process uh, from starting to write yeah. to, you know, like here you are editing it and writing bits and pieces? Yeah, so that process probably took about six months of, of right. rewrites and, 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 and writing again and, okay. and what have you. And, and, you know, removing chapters and putting new ones in and, and just sort of shuffling things around and shuffling yeah. the order around as well. Yeah. Um, so I did that. And then, you know, once you kind of get it to a point where, you, where you're happy with it, I did give it to some key people, some friends and family. And one of them actually was, uh, she's a university lecturer and she's a retired lecturer. Yep. Um, and she's a Scottish Jewish woman. Yep. And she's Scottish a, Jewish. Yes. Living in Australia. Yes, I know. Very, very strong willed woman yeah. um she's in her, her early 70s yeah and very honest and i thought she's going to tell me mm. how it is yep. and i thought you know she she's you know used to you know teach in, in a in, you know as a lecturer in the university so uh i gave it to her and she gave me some really great feedback in terms of um story structure um she did say you need to sort of remove certain things because you're kind of you know saying too much yep. here and you need yep. to establish this uh, story a little bit better, but um, she gave me some really great structure. I gave it to a few other friends as well and, and got feedback as well, just to get it to a point that I knew it was at its best possible yeah. position, I suppose, because yeah. I didn't have an agent, you know, so for me to go into the next stage, which was just trying to find a publisher, that was like, you know, that's a huge step because, you know, you've got to do the hustle on your own, you know, and you've got to look at um, all the criteria to, to submit a manuscript and each publisher has a different requirement. So 
you're submitting, you know, cover letters, you're submitting, you know, your manuscript. Some some of them just want half a manuscript. Some of them just want the first chapter. Some want the right. full manuscript. Yep. So, you know, each one takes, you know, quite a bit of time for the for the submission process. So anyone who's kind of gone through submission for say like, you know, funding and things like that would understand the process and the time it takes. So I chose 10 publishers. Whoa, that's a lot. Um, yeah, and I thought, you know what, if I don't get anything, I'll, I'll go out on my own and I'll self-publish, you okay. know? So I thought, yeah. I'll, I'll give 10 a go. Yeah. Um, and then you've got to wait. And yeah. it's the waiting game. You've got to wait how, for How long before you... Heard? Everyone's different. Some take six months, some take longer, a year. And were there, there would have been some that you never heard from? Uh, yes, some I never heard from. I got a... Generally, when they don't like it, they respond quite quickly. Oh, do they? <laughs> yes. And they say, it's, you know, it, we're not taking on your uh, your manuscript. Right. Um, and that's, you know, like that's a little bit dagger in the heart. Of you know, course you, it you, is. you take it personally. Yeah, you know, but well, it's like, it's, you'll put so much time and effort that's into right, it. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. But uh, in the end, I got two publishing offers. Um, one uh, overseas uh, with a UK publisher and one in Australia. And I really wanted to go with an Australian Publisher. Right. How how did it happen? Did, did you apply to? You know, did you just send it to an overseas? Yeah, pub- yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, sent to an okay. overseas publisher, and, and they came. Wow, back. Yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Considering that you know Australian, but it was overseas. Yeah, and I well, the thing is, the the reason why I actually chose an Aussie publisher, I thought a lot of my stories, well, pretty much all my stories are based in Australia yep. and, and they're Australian stories with Australian yep. people. You know, they're my friends and family and and what have you. So I, I wanted, and I also want to support you know, an Australian publishing firm as well. I, you know, it was very, you know, I suppose I was flattered that a UK publisher wanted to, to grab my book and, and, and publish it, but yeah. I, was, I was really keen to, to stick with an Australian company. Okay, so all of a sudden you've got a publisher. What was it like walking in, uh, you're like, uh, to that first meeting? You're yeah. Like, and what did they tell you? You are like, oh, obviously not, you don't want to tell us too much, but, I'm interested and I know our viewers yeah. will be interested in yeah. this. Well, essentially, the, the way it kind of happened is, you know, they expressed interest. They said that we're very interested in your manuscript. Um, and then I had a, a FaceTime meeting with them. Um, so we discussed the book and, and what do you want to get out of the book and what's, the, what's your audience and, you know, asking all those kind of questions what, to what, find out. What do you think is your audience? Is it your what was on radio that I would be aware of when you're on Joy? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So my sort of main core audience would be, um, you know, gay men and straight women, you right. know, sort of in that 30 plus, you know, sort yep. of age bracket, you know, that's that's my core audience. But the funny thing is with this book at the moment, it is out there at the moment. And, you know, I'm getting messages from people who are a lot younger that are, you know, in their early 20s that are enjoying the book and people oh, who are a lot older okay. that are really loving the book as well. So, you know, I, I suppose I've pigeonholed myself into this bracket, but I'm realising, no, no, it's actually a lot well, wider, well, it's you know. harder to judge, isn't it? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. And, and the cover's a bit of fun. So a lot of people that like to read but don't want anything too heavy yeah. would see that cover and go, oh, what's this all about? Yeah, yeah. a little bit naughty. But yeah, yeah, a little bit yeah, naughty. Yeah. And but down the bottom saying, you know, like, not recommended for children. I love <laughs> absolutely that. Absolutely not. And there was another warning in inside the book to say, you know, this is definitely not suitable for children. It's quite inappropriate. So, you know, because the cover, like you said, does look a little bit fun, but it is quite a quite a naughty read. Right. But, um, so so they've, they've got it and they will assign you a editor. Yeah, Is that what happens? Yeah. So once you, you know, sort of, uh, you know, ha- have the initial meeting, um, they present you with a, with a contract. Um, and was that, was that exciting or scary, scary and exciting? Scary. Scary. Why scary? Because you're kind of signing a book over to, to someone else. And, and, you know, it goes from a creative process into a commercial business process. Yeah, yeah You know, so yeah. you've got to kind of go, okay, well, this is actually quite serious now and there's money involved and investments and, and all that kind of stuff, you know, to get this book out there. Yeah. Um, so, and there were a few terms that I will be quite frank, you know, that I wanted to negotiate certain terms in the contract, you know, and they were really open to that, so, which was fantastic. Um, but once you sign that, then you kind of go through a bit of a process. So the first process is the editor. You get assigned an dun, editor. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I know, I know. So that is hard. Now, for anyone who does anything creative, um, would I suppose appreciate this because, you know, when you relinquish your creative control mm. and you give it to a, a person who doesn't know you and, and they're reading it for the first time and they're they're literally pulling apart your creative work and all your words and your story you know telling and all that 
and they're, you know, they're literally just analyzing everything you say and they mark it all up in red. And it probably took about a month to get my first edit back from my editor. Um, and I was upset. I had a full meltdown. I just didn't go with that at all because I thought, look at all this red writing and these markups on, on my manuscript. Yeah. You know, what's going on? Yeah. And, and you kind of go through a self-doubt. You go, am I a good enough writer? Like, why are there so many markups in this, in this book, you know? Um, but it's just a case of the editor's job is to grab your story and, and make it the best possible yep. story. And did you have that conversation? We did. Yeah, right. we had many conversations. Right. <laughs> uh, and, and my editor was great. He, he was very understanding. Um, he challenged me. He pushed me. Okay. Um, and we became quite close towards the end of it. And, and that process took about three months. But you've got to trust yep. the editor, yep. you know, and, and the editor I got Well, was, and, and an experienced person as oh, well. Absolutely. And you were just going to say the editor you got was... Yeah, so the editor I got was a, um, a, a person who purely deals in uh, non-fiction and, and, you know, like biographies and memoirs and that. Right. that that's his specialty. Yep. Um, and, uh, yeah, so he look after, looked after me pretty well, I would say, you know, and, and three months of, of the edit and, you know, went through the whole process. But you also, like, when you're going through the edit, you, you make the edits, but then the next day you think, oh no, oh, I should change this. And you're emailing the editor at you know, 1am in the morning going, I think we should say this as well. And they're just like, oh my God, you need to stop. It's okay. The book's great. Don't worry about it. You know. So, so do they dump any of the stories? They didn't. Oh no. yeah, that's good. There was one chapter, which yeah. is a, a story that's based in, in uh, New York, where some crazy stuff happened. Um, and it was a very, very naughty chapter. Um, and so much so that I would say a, probably a quarter of that chapter was removed because it was too far out there. And I think my editor oh. was worried that I was probably going to be cancelled. Right. So he really wow. pulled it back, you okay. know, and, and, and said, you know, you need to play this and safe but, zone a little bit. And how did you feel about that? Do you, did you work it out and go, yeah, yeah, he's right? Or? Yeah, I, I definitely agreed because, okay. you know, a, I don't want to offend too many people. So, you know, I definitely had to pull it back a little bit. Um, but the way that story was, was edited, you know, I, I didn't lose any of the, the fun and the adventure and the craziness of the story, but it, it definitely is told in a, in a more refined light, I guess you could say. Right. You know, but once you go through the editing process, you think that's kind of it, but then you, there's other stages and you're like, what is going on? You know, I just want to get the book out, but you know, you go through um, what they call format design. So essentially my book has photos in it. So, you know, they lay out all the photos yeah, yeah. And, and I've got illustrations above each chapter and, you know, they position them. So you've got to look at the, the, the style and the, the, the layout and, and sign off on that and make sure you're happy with Whoa. that and move things around if you want to and stuff. Yeah, and then yeah. you go through the next stage, which is cover design. And that was an interesting process because I had a very clear vision in terms of my cover and yep. how I wanted it to be and, and, and look and, and the colour and all that kind of stuff. And my publisher had different ideas. So it was definitely a creative clash at the time, but we definitely compromised and, and came up with the cover, as you can see right. today. And what's it called? The Adventures of Little Andy. And what's the little subline? The little t subline is yeah. a hilarious memoir of messed up life moments. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Uh, and all of a sudden, here it is, when you, did they hand you the copy or was it sent to you in the post? No, you get it posted to you in, in boxes, like little brown boxes. Right. Yeah. So that was the first time you saw that it? That was the first time. I'd seen obviously the cover yeah, in, in a oh, mock yeah. and, you know, I had to sign off on the yeah. cover and everything. But you get it delivered um, to your house. Yeah. And uh, I got a delivery. It's all, you know, packaged beautifully, you know, and you literally open the box and, and you see it for the first time and you physically can hold the book. You could, you know, you smell a new book, yeah, you know, it has yeah. that beautiful oh, print does. smell yes, and, and all yeah. that kind of stuff. So to physically hold it and Were, and, and were you with it. your partner? No. no. Did, oh, no. no. What a terrible person I know, you I'm are. a horrible person, David. <laughs> That's why I've written a book all about my horrible times I've done things. Matt, I feel so I know, sorry I know. for you. <laughs> no, I actually wanted to be alone. Yeah, I actually Aye. opened, yeah. I was really private about that because it's such a, you know, this is three years of work, you know, and I've got to this point and... I actually sat in the bedroom and opened the box up on my own and I just sat in the room Aww. and I looked through it and I light, laid in bed and I just, just looked at it. And, and, you know, I will be honest, you know, writing the book and going through the process, there were many stages where I doubted myself whether I could do it. I didn't tell many people as well. I kept this yep. on, the, on the down low. Yep. Um, you know, obviously my partner, Matt, knew yep. my mum and a couple of close friends, but that was kind of it. I yeah. didn't tell anyone else because I thought if I don't 
get it out there and I, I don't get a publishing deal or I don't complete it. I didn't want that kind of incomplete project. Oh, you know, that I, t- I, I totally get you it. Know, yeah, I, I totally yeah. get it. You know, like, because so many people go, oh, I'm writing a book. <laughs> How many people? Like, yeah, and 10 I'm years saying, later, yeah. you're still writing the book. You know, it's like, yeah. So I kept it really, really quiet, you know. And so that's why when I did open the box and see the book for the first yeah. time, it was just me and little Andy lying in bed yeah. looking at each other and going, oh. well, I've, I've, I've actually done it, you know. Did so, you read any of it or did you not read it? I did. It? I actually oh, read you? the book again. And I've read oh, the book so many times. Yeah. I wrote the book, you know, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, you know during the edit process, yeah. you're reading constantly, you know. But um, I read the book from cover to cover again. And uh, it's kind of a, you know, it's definitely a, a pinch yourself moment to go, wow, I've got a physical book now, you know. Mm. and. And then to see it in bookstores. And I've seen you holding it up in a bookstore with somebody taking a photo of you. Yep. Uh, that would be the surreal time, wouldn't that it? That is definitely. Or, not surreal, I think exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tell me your thought. Yeah, no, you're right. It's exciting and yeah. you're spot on. It's surreal. It's, right, it's both okay. of those, you yep. know. You're, you're excited to see it out there, but it's kind of like, you know, a surreal moment to go, I've actually got a book in a bookstore and not just one bookstore, multiple bookstores and and you know, people can actually pick it up and, and buy it, take it home and hopefully enjoy it and get a yeah, few laughs out yeah, of it. Yeah. But it is a surreal moment. And then, you know, um, a lot of bookstores these days, um, if you go in and, and you're the author of a book that's in stock, they get you to sign it. Oh, okay. It's like, oh my God, you want me <laughs> to sign it? You sure I'm gonna de- devalue the book if I sign it? <laughs> so they get you to sign it. And um, the, the sort of the, the cream of the crop is once you sign a book in a bookstore, they give you the, um, you know, the sticker, sticker that you put yeah. on it, which is signed copy. And that's just like, oh, Whoa. come on, this is a bit crazy. Yeah. You know. Well, and what are you going to do in stores? Is that all part of it? Or Yeah, look, yeah, I, I definitely think I will. Yeah, down the track, do some in stores. But now it's about sort of publicising the book and, and, and doing, you know, the, the press and the interviews. And thank you for having me. My you know? pleasure. <laughs> it's a good plug. Um, but yeah, getting it out there and just sort of telling people that, you know, the book's out there, it's available now. And, um, you know, and... Uh, yeah, just hopefully people enjoy it really and just get a few laughs out yeah. of it. You know, that's all I want. I think yeah. the world as we see it now is going through some pretty crazy dark times and we have for, for a long time now with, mm. you know, especially, you know, you're a Melbourneite, I'm a Melbourneite with COVID and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, this is just a light read. It's an easy read. It's a funny read. Mm. It's naughty. It's yep. inappropriate. Uh, you I've, know. Re- I've read quite a few of the stories. <laughs> hilarious. Uh, and, I, and I'm and i reading it. I can see you. you know, it's really interesting. <laughs> I can pitch you, which is the fun thing. Yeah. <laughs> well, look, can, absolutely congratulations. I'm so thrilled for you. When you told me that you had um, written this book, um, I went, Oh yeah, like everyone else does. But then when the finished product, you know, like I, you, you gave it to me. We met in the cafe one Saturday we morning. Did. We did the handover. Yes, and uh, you know, like it's, I, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. I'm really Thank thrilled you. for Thank you. Thank you, David. So, Appreciate yeah. that. So um, let, let's let's see when it's number one on the bestsellers list. That would be great. <laughs> Imagine if that happened. Oh my God. That would definitely, I have to come back for another interview hey, then to talk about that. Yeah, you know. You know like, oh no, but you probably wouldn't do the next one. I'm too important. No. That would do. Absolutely not. Um, Andy, thank you so much for coming on the thank show you, today. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. All the very best uh, with uh, uh, the book. And what's it called again? The Adventures of Little Andy. Uh, there it is, the fabulous cover. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thanks for watching. I'm David Hunt. You've been watching The Art Hunter and we're of course back next week. See you later.